Mr. Hop's Playhouse 3 continues six months after the events of the first game, where we played as Ruby and burnt our house to the ground in the hopes of stopping Mr. Hop. Mr. Hop's 1 took place not long after the end of Mr. Hop's Playhouse 2, in which we see Ruby's Nana Esther being taken by Mr. Hop's, or more specifically, the Entity. The creature that Esther thought she had defeated all those years ago in the underworld, with his own six medallion. After he returned to claim her soul, Esther then begins behaving erratically before dying, seemingly at the hands of the Entity. Mr. Hop's Playhouse 3 has gone full 3D, and I gotta say, like mad respect to the developers Moonbit for changing it up in such a drastic way, because it it must have been a really daunting task for them changing the style of a game that much, especially given that this is the last game in the series of Mr. Hop's Playhouse. And even with my preference for the 2D pixel side scroller style from the first two games, the third game certainly mixed things up with the types of puzzles uh, and battling that takes place in the game. I mean, we had some, some pretty cheesy boss battles, and there was a bit of FNAF stuff thrown in for good measure. And then there's the ending, but we'll get to that later. Mr. Hop's Playhouse 2 opened up a Pandora's box of lore, which we covered in our previous video on the games. Check that out here. But there was still a large number of unanswered questions surrounding the entity, Esther's ability to actually use the medallions in the first place, why the medallions stopped protecting Esther after all those years, as well as what's next for Isabel. Well, we're going to answer that and a number of other unexplained areas of Mr. Hop's Playhouse in this episode for understanding the game. Now, I'll be honest, I do love it when a game with interesting and deep lore literally spoon feeds you the, the missing details as it saves a lot of time in research. In the underworld in Mr. Hop's Free, where Ruby gets taken to and where Esther is after she died at the hands of the entity, there are these strange statues that dump lore onto us, which help piece together the events of Mr. Hop's 2 through to Mr. Hop's 3. We learn from the second game that the entity was a fallen angel and was banished to the underworld, stealing the six medallions that kept balance between light and dark and began harvesting souls, as we see when he targets the children of Blackland's Manor. Maybe it means you're going crazy. Okay, no one likes Molly. Using his servants, the three cursors who were born out of the dolls of Isabel, a girl the entity gave the medallions to many years ago in exchange for being a subordinate of his. Upon her death at the hands of the town of Blackland, she would survive as a creature of shadow and do the entity's bidding, as we see in Mr. Hop's 2 and 3. The entity made sure that after getting revenge on Esther, that the rest of her family would also suffer the same fate, and so went after and murdered her daughter Jenna and son-in-law David as well as going after Ruby herself, which are the events of Mr. Hop's Playhouse 1. But after the house burnt down, the entity would not stop and instructed Mr. Hop's to bring Ruby to the underworld. The only thing the entity did not count on was that Ruby would free Esther from her chains in the underworld. And despite throwing all of his strongest shadow figures and the three curses of Mr. Hop's, Miss Bow and Mr. Stripe at both Ruby and Esther, none of them would stop them. Not even this creepy guy. Now as we progress through the underworld, we are also shown events of the past that reveal details about a pregnant woman and her husband under attack from the Entity. We learnt from one of the lore dumping statues that Esther was no ordinary girl and was, as we saw in Mr. Hop's 2, able to wield the power of the six medallions. This sequence helps explain why, as that pregnant woman is Faith. Esther's mother and the man is her father Arthur. Faith had a vision and spoke to the divine, presumably a god, who informed her that Esther was special and that they needed to keep her safe. The entity appeared to target Faith, whether it knew of Esther and her potential future abilities that would lead to his downfall or not she was targeted, and because of that Faith would die in childbirth, and Arthur would give Esther 
to Blackland's Manor orphanage, either because he could not cope on his own, or that she would be safer there with the entity no longer knowing where she was. I'm inclined to think that it was because he could not cope. And the reason I say that is because when Faith told Arthur that she spoke to God, he presumed that she was acting crazy and did not believe her, which makes me think that he just gave up Esther. And of course, Esther grows up in Blackland's Manor, and that's where we see the events of Mr. Hobbs 2. Now, whether the entity knew Esther was at Blackland's Manor Orphanage or not, it would not matter as the entity targets her anyway, giving her nightmares as well as the three cursed dolls which go on to attack her throughout Mr. Hop's Playhouse 2. But like in Mr. Hop's 2, Esther, upon collecting all of the medallions, would harness their power. Only this time in Mr. Hop's 3, it leads to her ascension. Esther, after calling Ruby her little gem and reconvincing her that no, actually Ruby, you freaking idiot, you shouldn't side with the literal devil, giant, shadow creature. You should in fact believe your own Nana who is currently in her child form. You should absolutely believe her. Esther gets the last medallion and ascends as she presumably, like the entity once upon a time, is an angel and this angel ascended Esther proceeds to beat the living crap out of the entity destroying him once and for all but not without being guided by faith and no we're not talking about that faith we're talking about her mother who was the sort of light that helped lead uh, Ruby and Esther to where they needed to go so faith was looking down on Esther as well but even with Esther literally obliterating the entity, someone else survived. Isabel, the girl who gave up her soul to join the entity all those years ago, whose dolls were the vessels for the three curses, she lives on. Now it's unclear whether this will lead to anything in the future, as Moonbit have reportedly said that this is the last game in the series. However, like a lot of game devs, they could well set up a new game in the same universe with Isabel as the antagonist, who knows? All I can say at this point is that I can't wait to see what the developers of Moonbit do with their games going forward, as I've thoroughly enjoyed Mr. Hop's Playhouse, and I hope you guys did too. If you did like this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe. Make sure you do, or Isabel will send the creepy clown 